want to get your charity fit for funding, uh, a good to give uh, webinar. So we'll be talking about a really hot topic right now. Now is the ideal time for you to be applying for funding. So in this webinar, we will be discussing um, everything that you need to know to make sure that you are eligible for funding because there is so much funding available. My name is Katrina Douglas. I am Head of Marketing for good to give and I am joined by my colleague, Head of Funding, Dominic Pinnock, who is the expert when it comes to funding. But before we get into that, let me tell you uh, a little bit about good to give who we are and what we do. So we have been supporting churches for over a decade, really helping them save money and increase their income through a range of services. We serve over 400 churches in the UK and a number of charities, a high number of uh, charities with a range uh, of services, funding just being one of them. And we are the UK's number one provider of gifting. So let's get into it. Let's get into it this afternoon. Um, and let me introduce you to Dominic Pinnock, who, like I said, is our head of funding. Dominic has over 30 years funding experience. He has obtained funding from the National Lottery, uh, the Lloyds Banking Foundation, the MAWC, the Henry Smith Foundation, and many, many more. So when it comes to funding, when it comes to how you can access funding, there really is no one better. Welcome, Dominic. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm so excited about our conversation this afternoon. Well, thank you, Katrina, for the great, for the great builds up there. Um, I'm looking forward to hopefully um, informing all the attendees of what their options are, what their best options are in regards to achieving grant funding. Excellent, excellent. Um, so let's get into our first question. And if you do have any questions related to funding, please, please do drop them in the question and answer section and we will absolutely get to them because we don't want you to leave this session without having your questions answered. So Dominic, first question, why should churches and charities be thinking about applying for funding? Well, the, the first and probably the most obvious answer to that is um, it's available. It's out there. Um, there's loads of sources for funding. And uh, the main difference is how you go about accessing that funding. I'm hearing a lot of churches talking about um, going for low interest or or interest-free loans, but either way, they need to acknowledge that that's a debt. They have to yeah. Pay. And um, we don't know what the after effects of COVID-19 are going to be, but the talk is, and the signs are, is that the economy is going to be very messy. Um, mm. And so taking on debt at this point may not be um, the best thing to do. Um, so in, ter in terms of that, window of opportunity here even though COVID-19 has been it's, a, it's a, been a terrible pandemic and uh, churches just need to be aware about that. Yeah yeah it has. Okay so that's a really good point so a lot of times our first point of call is uh, going for loans or that sort of thing but there's literally hundreds of thousands of pounds available isn't, isn't there Dominic? Um, and so <laughs> I want to really just reel off a couple of stats for you just to give you some context um, for why now is such a good time to be going for funding. So a number of funds have been set up specifically to support churches and charities during this COVID-19 crisis and MPs are actively pushing for extra funding for charities in light of the pandemic. So literally the government wants to give you money. The government wants to give you money. So, you know, definitely do be open to applying for it. So funding about amounts can vary depending on the organization. However, you know, the average grant size overall is uh, 80,000 uh, pounds. But, you know, there are various caveats to that, which Dominic will begin to speak about um, as we proceed through this webinar. 
And so loads of trusts are available for various things uh, that you may want to do within your community. So the main one is lottery, for example, which has a, a funding pot of 360 million pounds and is responsible for managing that amount on behalf of the government. But unfortunately, still most people, um, most organizations that apply for funding uh, are unsuccessful. Can you talk to us about that, Dominic? Why are so many uh, organizations, although there is so much money available, why are they uh, so unsuccessful? Um, there, are, um, there, there are many reasons for that, um, for why organizations are being unsuccessful. Um, there's that old saying that sometimes um, a, square a, a square peg cannot fit into a round circle or something yeah. like that. And, um, yeah. So basically it's um, ensuring that you are actually um, shaped and structured correctly to meet the criteria and to actually meet the objectives of funding bodies. Um, a lot of times organizations, charities, churches, they're not doing the preparation work. Yeah. It's all in the preparation. Um, your record keeping, uh, the right policies and procedures in place. Um, do you actually know your project that you want to deliver? Mm. That's how it is. If you go into battle without the right um, instruments, without the right weapons, yeah. then um, it's going to be difficult to win. Um, mm. A lot of times we've got a lot of good ideas going on, especially at grassroots levels. Yeah. However, when it comes down to actually um, putting it on paper and evidencing what, what um, charities, what churches are doing, sometimes we're a bit, our evidence is a bit sparse. Mm. So it's a, during this period, it's a good time for charities to look inwardly how are you recording your information? Um, how, are you, um, how are you keeping your financial records? Yeah. Have you got a status? Are you a charity? Yeah. Are you a not-for-profit organization or a CIC? Yeah. Um, because uh, we've got to be more business-like. Yeah. We're going for grant funding. Grant funding doesn't mean that you, you've got to, we've got to have more than just an idea. Plenty of organizations out there have ideas, but the difference is that um, we need to make sure that our ideas stand out. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So absolutely. that involves you knowing your unique selling points. Yeah. What is your unique selling point? What makes you stand out from the crowd? What's going to get you the business? Okay. Excellent, Dominic. So what funding opportunities are available during COVID-19? And I can see that someone is asking us if we can speak up so that they can hear a little better. So we will absolutely do that. Um, so what funding opportunities are available during COVID-19, Dominic? Right, there are, I hope I'm not shouting. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> you, that's um, it. Yeah, but what it is, um, there hundreds of trusts and foundations out there that are providing grant funding. Um, the key is finding out which one or which ones suit you best, no matter whether you're a charity, whether you're a church. Yeah. And also, in terms of what opportunities there are, um, it's quite interesting that a lot of churches, a lot of charities, I think more emphasis on the churches here, what access funding, and they may say, right, I'll say, how much do you need? What do you need to deliver? And I'll say, well, we need about thousand pounds. Now, the world of fund of, of um, grant, grant giving is very much similar sometimes to, to applying for a loan. Um, usually, if you apply for a loan of 100,000 pounds, you've got to have a history you've got to have a financial history, you've got to have built up that credit history. In terms of grants, you've got to show that you've got the capacity to manage a grant that big. Um, have you got the financial controls? 
what experience have you got of managing other budgets and delivering projects on time and within the allotted um, parameters. So um, the, the, in, t in terms of um, what funding you can access, there's loads, but also you've got to narrow it down when you're searching for it. You will certainly, there are a number of sites that you can search on, um, such as um, uh, one of the best ones for churches is churchgrants.co.uk, um, which is specifically for faith organisations. Um, now, to give, we are members of a number of these search engines. We, we pay our subscriptions every month and we make sure that we're in the best position to do the best searches so that we can provide our clients with the best possible chances of uh, accessing funding and accessing funding that is appropriate to them. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. So what type of projects can organisations apply for funding for? In fact, let me ask you a precursor to that. What is a project? Because some people might be on here and we're, we're speaking mm. about projects, but what is a project? Well, a project, if, you, if you, you're applying for a project, it's usually, it's a, it's a, could be a piece of work, it could involve services, and it is um, something that you're going to deliver within a specific period of time mm. within uh, certain parameters you're going to deliver it in a very specific way and so usually you'll say well you'll say, a project has got a start and an end mm -hmm. now it could be open-ended whereby when you get to the end you've got this open end where you say right we're going to review it now and we may take it in this direction or that direction but in it, it's got a start and it's got an end and it's planned right Okay. Okay. Excellent. So what type of projects then can churches and charities um, apply for funding for? Well, firstly, they've got to be for community benefit. There's, there's that side of it where um, you're applying for funding that's going to benefit the community around you, that's going to benefit your congregation. It may have a, a very specific um, title whereby it might be for health, it might be for young, it might be for elderly. But you need to know, you've got to have a very robust project plan. Um, but also there, there's funding out there for core running costs. Mm. For all those churches that are thinking about um, applying for loans so that they can pay wages, they can pay the bills, rent, those things. There are, there are um, uh, Funding bodies such as Tudor Trust, Esme Fairburn, Anchor Trust, um, Albert Hunt Trust yeah. uh, can help to see um, to to provide you with the core costs that can actually help you to survive. Um, right. I always say right. those are the most important costs because if costs sorted out, then um, cool. Well, to to even survive, to keep on going. So I'd say even before project costs, core costs must come first. Okay, okay. So with all this funding available, Dominic, um, why do you think many churches and charities fail to apply for funding? I think fear is one thing. Um, I think um, the the majority of um, funding. Applications now you have to access them online. Okay. And I know myself, um, it took me quite a while. I I started when I first started doing funding bids, it was it was all written. You'd write right. them out or you'd you, you may use a word processor or a typewriter for mm -hmm. any ones out there who may not even know what a typewriter is. Yeah. You know, you you physically got to print it, pull out the paper and then send it in in the post and um, right. So um, what, it, what it is, a lot of people are scared of technology, especially, uh, I suppose, in a number of churches where um, some of the leaders may be um, getting on a bit in age and mm. um, be that confident around IT, around technology. But um, what, I'd say, what I'd say is that um, it's, it's like anything else in life. Once you 
start doing something and you become more acquainted with acquainted with acquainted with it, with it you are going to become better at doing it yeah. and the fear of failure or dealing yeah. with failure that's a massive one um, when you apply for a grant you're putting all your hopes in there your beliefs mm. you're thinking that this is what's going to allow me to either do this excellent piece of work or to survive yeah. when you get turned down and i say when because everybody who applies for funding gets turned down at some point yeah. um, it's like going for that dream job and getting mm. that you put all your hopes in, into and it can be like a, really like a kick in the stomach and some people are not they don't show the resilience to think i'm going to go back again yeah building a relationship with funders letting them know that you don't fall at the first hurdle mm. yeah. some of my most successful clients have been back to the drawing board three times up to yeah. three times before they've actually achieved funding wow yeah yeah once you get in there then um, you know it's 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 quite it's quite interesting once you get one it's like waiting for a bus suddenly three come along at the yeah. same <laughs> So stick in there, yeah. you know, and yeah. um, just don't give up, be resilient. Yeah, excellent, excellent, Dom. So what would you, and I guess I just want to point out here, this is one of the key reasons to really partner with an organisation like good to give isn't it? Because we do all the legwork for you, basically. We kind of coach you through the process, we mentor you through the process, we fill out the application. So actually, so many of those fears that prevent churches and organizations accessing funding, we kind of say, okay, hand it over to us and we'll take care of it. Yeah, well, and that, that's the thing because um, we've got to give on board. You get a team of expert bid writers mm. um, who are working on your behalf. Um, you get a funding plan yeah. with um, deadlines, showing the criteria, showing how much how, how much you can go for mm. i think the most important thing is that it gives you as a charity or a church more time to invest in to continuing to do the great work you're already doing yeah. um, it puts the service users first it puts your congregations first whilst you're having to be looking over your shoulder all the time mm worrying about the finances so uh, what, what i would say we also can help you to put in uh, to submit multiple applications um it can we can help you to widen the scope of your work as well yeah. and to maybe go into different areas that you've always thought about but you just haven't had the capacity yeah so, um, so sorry Sorry. No, 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 go ahead, Don. Dominic, sorry, go ahead. Um, what, what you find as well is that um, a lot of the churches and charities are worried about, um, we've got our, we, 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 we're, we're a company and we, we have our bills to pay as well. Yeah. And, uh, they may worry to say, well, we can't afford consultants. Yeah. Um, we always endeavour, we try our best mm. to build the fees, our fees into all the bids that we do because we don't want to affect the progress or the chances of success of the projects or the services that our clients want to deliver. Yeah. It wouldn't be good business for us to do that anyway. Yeah. And so um, we, we always try to um, set up the best possible arrangement for our clients. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. So what are the five main things, would you say, Dominic, um, that churches and charities need to do to get funding ready? Well, the first thing is know yourself. Um, mm. Know your projects, know your services, know your worth, know how yeah. you're going to deliver. So in other words, I'm saying you should have a plan. Um, yeah. Just have an idea, have a plan which looks at it looks at your ideas from every single angle, tears it to bits. And some people will do a plan, then realize that they can't even deliver it. Yeah, yeah. 
you have got to be the expert at what you're delivering. The next thing is know your area. And I'm talking mm. geographical area. Who's already delivering in your area? Who exists there? How uh, are there any gaps in the provision that they're providing? Yeah. When the team, can you partner up with them? You just need to just come in and do a totally separate service to actually make sure that you can um, make it um, a high quality one and high. Yeah. Um, also, um, I mentioned earlier, have a status. Yeah, all these have a status. Um, are you a charity? Do you have a website? Do you have a good online presence? Mm. All these things add points to your applications when you submit them. Yeah. Um, build up relationships with the funders. Courting the funder is very important. Let them know who you are. Keep them up to date on the good work that you're doing. Make them like you before you actually put in an application. Yeah. How many people will give a job to somebody who they don't like? Mm, so true. Excellent. Um, and finally, um, develop a fundraising plan. Um, mm. Know where you're going to be going for fundraising. Um, good to give could very well be part of that fundraising plan um, or central to that fundraising plan because we can actually take care of all of the fundraising needs of an organization um, but don't just be grasping because usually when you're just grasping at funding and saying oh i've seen that i've seen that and it's not in a structured manner mm. that that will show in the applications that you're yeah, yeah. okay so uh how would you say how does partnering help with funding applications because I know there are such um, big pots available but partnering sometimes and collaborating with other organizations can help um, can it John so so how can organizations go about partnering and what are some things to consider well if I go back again to knowing your area um, I, I'd say some doing some good robust um, community mapping um, mm mapping out your area seeing who does what and seeing where there's areas of collaboration attending networking meetings obviously we're in lockdown now but then again what are we doing now there's a lot of you can still go to networking meetings and share information and to be too um protective of what you've got um, so sometimes we can um treat our organization as a, like a child, like this is our baby. And because of that, that would mean that you may not, you, you may not know when to let go of it. Yeah. You become so protective that you don't let anything that is actually going to um, bolster what you're doing, is going to increase your efficiency, it's going to make you more profitable. Mm. And I'm saying profitable because community organization when i look at charities i still think about approaching them with a business-like type of attitude yeah. because in these days it's about survival it's about knowing who your competitors are and sometimes it's better to join with them rather yeah. than fight against them because you get to pool resources you get to pool knowledge and also you get to pool finances yeah. smaller one in a partnership that means when you're going for funding for, for for funds and grant funding then that means that you're learning so much more and when you go for them independently well i went for this funding bid i, I was successful here i got this amount and they'll be looking and thinking all oh, right i didn't realize you were so you were so big and established mm -hmm. but you've you've partnered up that's what you get from that partnership Besides the, besides the extra income. Yeah. So what are some things that if, you know, uh, two organisations are looking to partner, what are some safeguards um, that organisations can put in place just so that the partnership stays, you know, goes in the direction that both parties want it to be and, you know, no party uh, 
ends up worse off? Yeah. What are some safeguards you can put in place? Um, know what you're getting, know what you're getting into. Firstly, do do your research. Who have um, this? Who has this potential partner partnered up with in the past? Yeah. Um, that that could be part of your community mapping exercise. Yeah. Um, I think having a contract in place, an actual written formal contract, um, even if you know the people, even mm. if you say that you've got friendships and uh, relationships already there in place. A, um, having the right type of contract in place is going to protect both parties. Um, you need to know how you get in. You need to know how you get out. Yeah. Uh, you need to know who's going to take the lead. How are decisions made? If, you, if all of this is in writing, then there's less chance of having conflict during the period of that relationship. Yeah. If you don't have a contract in place, then um, that um, saying that it's not worth the paper that it's written on is very true. Yeah. Get it down on paper, protect yourself and protect your service users. Excellent, excellent. So how do you find the funding opportunities that are right for you, Dominic? Because it's very much about fit, isn't it? Mm. I think in, t in terms of finding the ones that are right for you, um, I'd take a step further back and I'd say, you need to know you, who you is, <laughs> who mm. you are, I should say. You need to know who you are. Um, for you to find the right funder, you've got to have a very clear picture of who you are, what your objectives are, what their objectives are. And um, if you can hit that spot on, you've got um, a much higher probability of achieving funding. Right. I've seen how many um, organisations um, who have be so wide off the mark when they're doing funding bids um, because they haven't done their research before to check that they fit in with the criteria of mm. that funder. Um, in terms of choosing the right funder as well, a lot of that work by um, accessing the correct search engines and um, but even then you've got to populate that search engine with information so the more detail you give the better results you'll get at the end of it yeah excellent excellent so you know for those watching and wondering okay how can good to give support with the funding process can you give us a, a, a an in-depth overview of our process and how you know we can support churches and charities like the ones who are joining us today um, in actually getting funding and the benefits of doing that. Okay. Well, the first thing is, is that um, have your information ready. Mm. When, when, when you con the more information that you provide us with, so you contact the Good to Give office. Initially, we'll have a telephone conversation. And during that telephone conversation, um, we will be recording some of your information, but we will send you out an introductory email. And in that introductory email, the information form that you will get, um, we need as much information in there. Um, if we don't have the information, we don't have anything really to work with. Mm. We're working with so many clients that um, it's in, it's impossible. We, we don't want to fabricate anything because that will be uh, that will mean that you're not really representative um, picture that will be given to funders of what you're going to be delivering on yeah. forging on on fraud as well. At the same time, we we need to have all the information. We need to know what your financial situation is. Funders do do checks. Now they're not like credit checks like when you go for a loan, but they will check to see, um, like if you've got a website, what have you delivered before? Are you who you say you are? And um, it's important that you do all the prep work beforehand because we could do some brilliant applications, but then if a funder goes and looks at looks 
on your website and sees that no, that doesn't fit. No, that's definitely not them. Then um, there's, there's a chance that you're not going to get the funding. A very good chance you're not going to get the funding. Yeah. All funding applications, in general, right across the board, then are successful. Um, yeah. Even with the national lottery, which is the largest funder, um, we're talking about close to around 80% of applications are turned down. Mm. Um, and I think that's where Good to Give could uh, actually come in. Yeah. The fray there because um, I, we, 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 we turn it around where there's more than 80% chance of us being successful with our clients than us being unsuccessful. And so that's where the value of having us as uh, to help to guide clients through that um, funding process is mm. important. But I've got to say again, um, we've got to emphasize that if it's don't provide us with the information, if it was bit by bit, it, so it makes a, a funding application become a ve very disjointed. Um, when we're asking for information and we want it all in one, um, if the clients can do that, that makes things so much easier and so much um, more likely that we're going to be successful. Excellent, excellent. So what we're gonna do now is go into some of your questions. Please do continue to post your questions in the question section and we're gonna get through them. So uh, Tony uh, says, I have met with the National Lottery representative, representatives, but was told that they don't fund religious projects. Is there a specific lottery fund available for a project to build a new hall at a place of worship? Um, in, in regards to the lottery, to build a new hall at a place of worship, um, that may not necessarily be the funding body that you would um, go to. Um, I think um, there are a number of other funders who I would actually go to first, even before the lottery. The lottery from time to time, it does have very specific funding for faith organizations, for faith projects. And uh, you've just got to keep um, in contact with them and um, keep on looking on their website for when those come up. But um, in, in, regard, in regards to that, I can't think of any fund with the actual national lottery at the moment. Um, if, you look, if you go to church, churchgrants.co.uk, um, you would be able to find um, um, funders on there who would help with those type of capital costs. Okay. So, but if a religious organization or a church, they want to set up a community-based project that is of benefit to the community, would the National Lottery fund that? Yes. Um, okay. It, in, in to, if it, if it's a, you've, you've just got to show that it is community. And right. Okay. For the wider community and not just for the congregation of the church. When you, that, and that's why it's important that you set up as a charity. Okay. Charitable arm, and it goes through that as well. And, you know, what I would say is, and it could also depend on what are you calling this project. If you mm -hmm. go a very, I guess, religious type of name, then the, the argument would be that that name represents that this is not just about community, this is more about religion or faith. Yeah. It's important that you get the structure of the project correct and the naming of the project too. Uh, make sure that the name actually um, reflects what you're going to be doing. Yeah. So it's so now I guess is a good time for churches to really be looking at the community. You know, what are the main issues that the society is facing or their local communities are facing, especially in light of COVID-19? Because is it correct to say, Dominic, that um, projects that are addressing some of the COVID-19 issues um, are going to be top of the list. Definitely. Um, there were, there's been a number of um, churches and churches that I was working with just on the brink of and then 
um, we've been contacted where they've said, unfortunately, they're suspending um, their, their usual um, funding streams because they're redirecting all of their resources into COVID-19 projects. Yeah. So a lot of churches and charities, especially churches, I think have had to look at where they fit now and how, what type of services that they're going to be delivering. And I think um, it's very interesting what you said there, Katrina, about um, the church community. Uh, mm. Churches now, uh, have churches become maybe over the years a uh, distance from the community where they're within the community but not part of that community? And I believe the church should be part of the community. Absolutely. It's a good time to reevaluate and to look at where you are. And as we're seeing out there, a lot more people. Um, flocking towards churches they're they're um, they're re really refinding or finding the, their faith and yeah. um, so this is definitely a time of opportunity and for churches to position themselves in a much stronger position excellent so another question we have what is the difference between a cic and a not-for-profit well, a CIC, a community interest company, um, is different to a not-for-profit because just a, a CIC can actually generate profits, but mm -hmm. those profits are, have, you've got to show that those profits are reinvested back into the company or into the organisation. Right. For profit cannot be seen to generate any profits, as it says in the name. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Um, it's just that a not-for-profit company or organisation can also be registered through Companies House okay. and so can have directors um, who will then, who, and technically directors can more or less pay themselves what they want so I guess it's a bit of swings and roundabouts at the same time and, it's, and if anybody's got any doubts on what their status should be then I would suggest that you can, well, you can speak to us at Good to Give, or you can speak with any business consultant or accountant who can advise you on that. Okay, excellent. So, does the lottery fund, a uh, question from Carol here, does the lottery fund new build developments? Yes, they have been known to. Um, at one point, um, that, that fund was, um, was stopped for a while, but they do. Yes, and they, they, they fund capital projects and they fund revenue projects. Sometimes they can fund a mixture of revenue and capital. But as with everything, um, if you are wanting to access that type of funding, you've got to show that you can manage that, that type mm -hmm. of project. You've got to show that you, why you need it and that you've got experience of managing budgets of that size. Um, so what I'm saying to everybody is that we've always got to have that be real about what we can and what level we're at when we're going for funding. Sometimes to look at um, we need to go for maybe some smaller pots of money first to build up that reputation. Okay. Twenty thousand pounds and so on. Excellent. Okay, so uh, another question here is, oh, can you provide us with a site where to get the grant uh, loan form? Right. Um, well, in terms of loans, um, um, that, that isn't what we really specialise in. We, we, we're, we're, we're looking at more charities, not-for-profit organisations, CICs, and where loans aren't usually... Um, the type of um, direction that we'll take but um, in terms of grants um, grants online is a very good one um, so you've got to really if you, if you was to subscribe to that one um, then you've got to really have a lot of detail to put in there to make sure you get the right funders because it will literally provide you with hundreds of possible grant, grant, grant funding bodies when you go on there um, I've already mentioned church grants as well, um, but also locally, if you go to your local local authority on their website, 
they will, they will have information. They will have um, search search engines that you can access to find out level what grants are available. And especially right now during uh, this COVID pan COVID uh, pandemic. Excellent. Okay. So uh, what types of evidence are the funders looking for? I.e. what type of evidence should we be gathering? Um, firstly, they love primary evidence. So to, do, to get your primary research done, um, to ensure that you're doing questionnaires, surveys, written ones, online ones, consultation, speaking with the people who are going to be accessing the service. Other professionals, um, it doesn't matter where in the country they are a lot of the time as well. People who are experienced and respected within the area that you want to deliver um, and, and putting it in and presenting it in a professional manner. Um, annual reports, um, business plans, having um, proper um, uh, fin uh, financial records, um, putting it together in an Excel sheet, those, those, those type of things. Um, so that primary evidence is the oldest actually. Um, straight from the horse's mouth, show why you know better than anyone else that this is the way it should be done and this is what we need to do it. And if we don't do it, these are the repercussions. Um, I've got a, a story about um, a client many years ago who um, they were, I'd, I'd lined them up to get um, a grant of 350,000 pounds. This was from the National Lottery. They got through both stages. So all they had to do was get through interview which was on television or a discussion television on telephone <laughs> yeah and um, basically they were asked the question what will happen if we don't achieve if you don't get the funding from us and the person was so passionate saying that well you know what this is something that we will make happen no matter what bah, bah, straight away it's like you know what when we is funding for something else then because you sound so de so determined you're going to make this happen anyway and they didn't get the funding wow. so yeah so um in, ter in terms of what funders are looking for they want to know that they're going to have the most impact and that it won't happen without their funding because mm. if it can happen without their funding why are they funding it yeah, that's that's a really good point, Dominic. Because so often we don't think about it in those terms, do we? We think the more passionate we are, then you know. Uh, so no, that's that's a really interesting uh, and good story to highlight. So um, the next question is: uh, Could you share some stories of your success stories, please? It would be good to hear of these. So some. Oh, okay, um, I'm going to tell you one of the most. Um, simple ones um, that uh, actually it says a lot about the importance of grant funding. Um, this was early on, I mean this, well not, this was about five years ago now and um, somebody in the community, in the African Caribbean community, they came to see me and said, Dominic, um, I'd like to open a jerk chicken shop <laughs> yeah. and I said okay that sounds um, but, um I don't really provide funding for businesses or help people to get funding because number one there's not really any out there <laughs> so um I said on the other hand we have to think out of the box um could you teach somebody to jerk chicken could you teach somebody how to manage a, a catering facility? How to speak to people? Could you help them to refine their practice so that they turn up on time? They're wearing the right, right uniform, those type of things. And he said, well, yeah, I could, I'd, I'd love to do all of that. I said, no. could you run a project? And I got him funding so that he could start wow um, catering facility that was training people 
in catering skills, in um, I think they, they actually did civil service as well. And um, basically, it's still going today. Wow. They teach life skills there, um, interpersonal skills, and. Um, it wasn't like I got in a um, hundred thousand pounds, two hundred thousand pounds. It was about what he did with the money. Yeah. As um, as churches, as charities out there, sometimes we can't get lost in how much money that we get, because the more money we get, the better the grant, the better the story. It's about what we can do with that money. Yeah. On the other hand, I've worked with a project, um, this was in Bradford, where um, we had an organisation which was already set up, a nice, tidy, small organisation, where they had a house. And um, in that house, they uh, were taking in rough sleepers. And um, I came in, and because now they had very a very their structure was solid mm. was solid anything i asked for them they gave it me before i asked for it wow yeah. so um within two years time we got them a grant of it was around three hundred and fifty six thousand pounds and that was through lottery funding and then the following year we got them one hundred and thirty five thousand pounds and then we've topped them up 80,000 here and because they've got a, a perfectly oiled functioning machine that works they've been turned down for a number of grants as well initially they're very re they're, they're very resilient and um, they have just got everything in place and um, worked now with um, ex-inmates or ex-offenders um, they've done projects that are based around domestic violence and uh, because they've got their organization there tell the truth they can go into any community field and uh, i found that one because they were very small when we first met them and you know what now they're they're a, they're a big organization wow incredible incredible so i guess it just goes to show that so often we look about what funding opportunities are available but in order to access those funding opportunities, you really have to look internally and make sure you have the right structure and actually you are fit for funding um, as an organization. But if you can do yeah. but if you can do that, then you find that you don't you're able to not just access funding once, but literally over and over again because you're credible, you become credible, which is amazing. Um, and, and that's what we help organizations do, become credible, become funding ready. So actually it becomes a no brainer for these funding institutions to invest in your projects. So uh, the next question is, uh, what level of fees do you charge? Is it on a percentage um, of, of the grant? So I know it depends on a case by case basis. Um, uh, yeah, Dominic, but what would you say there? Um, well, it it is. We, it's on it's on a sliding scale, and um, basically, what you find is that the higher the grant, um, usually the the lower the percentages as well, um, because um, as I said earlier, um, our one of our main aims is yes, we run as a business, but we want to ensure that projects are affected by the amount that they've got to pay out to us. Um, it's what we do also take is we do take a deposit at the start of um, our relationship with a client. It's a small deposit and that helps to cover our, our costs, our running costs, because um, each of these applications, they take time, they take effort, they take energy and they take resources. Um, however, in regards to our final fee, um, which is only payable if that um, if that um, grant 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 for submittal is successful, um, so um, there's no pressure on the organisation really. And as I mentioned, we try to build that into any applications wherever possible. It's not always possible. Um, a number of funders they do not pay out 
for any type of consultation fees. So um, on those occasions, um, we have to discuss where is our fee going to, how is it going to be paid? And with each client, it's different. Um, so it's, um, I'm not really able to say, this is how it goes. It depends on the client. Have you got reserves in place? Have you, have you, have you got any other funds that you can draw on? Um, if not, we have to discuss how we're going to do it. Can we embed it within the application? Excellent. So uh, the next question we have is, what are some time frames for obtaining a grant? It differs. At the moment, if you were to apply to the National Lottery for a grant, um, they've got a six to eight week um, term period now. Um, and that's for even for the larger, the larger um, bids, and which is great because the region communities, which is the largest one, um, that one could take six months to a year before um, getting that final decision, making sure that they've got all the right information, you've developed the applications fully. So a six to eight week turnover, a much shorter application period. So uh, whilst on the other hand, someone like the Tudor Trust, if you were to apply to them now, six to eight months. So they're looking beyond COVID. And so in regards to that, that's, that's more for revenue costs. Um, so for salaries, wages, bills, um, rents, those type of things. Okay, excellent. So um, another uh, question here. So uh, I have used SurveyMonkey in the past, but found it expensive. Is there an alternative online survey provider that we can um, to gauge public interest in the project? There is, um, but it's it, it just it's gone out of my mind right now. SurveyMonkey is actually the the main one that I usually tell my clients to use. Um, oh gosh, what's it called now? Um, I'm not even going to wrap my brains too much right now, but there are other ones. Survey Monkey is the main one, and it, it depends because you can use Survey Monkey and do the the free survey, um, where that's up to a hundred people within a within, who are included within that survey. You go beyond that, then yes, you have to pay. Um, a lot of times, I just say to my clients, I'll keep it within a hundred people, and um, um, hopefully you'll get a good cross-section of people within that hundred you don't always have to speak with four or five hundred people yeah. excellent okay so the next question they all a statement actually so emma says she loved the jerk chicken the jerk kitchen shop example drawing out the project and using the funding effectively i love that example too emma so uh, no great great example and uh, Jarvis says, guys, this is a great seminar. Thank you so much. Uh, do you provide assistance or where can we go to be trained in putting together a project and running it successful, uh, successfully? We are good at doing church, but for us to improve our benefit in the community, we need help to transition into knowing how to run a service. Now, I love, love, love this. And this leads really nicely um, into the fact that we have a roadmap. Like we are here to support you in getting funding ready. And we realize that actually a lot of organizations, a lot of churches are great at doing church, but when it comes to delivering a service and a project, there is much assistance that is needed. And that's where we come in. And so, yes, we have the funding um, service, which again, um, before we leave, I will hand over to Dominic to really speak about how, um, you know, that works again. Um, and specifically how you can come to us, but you know, uh, just to, to let you know that we get you funding ready. So it's not just fundraising that we do, but hopefully you've heard on this webinar that actually there's a number of things that you need to do within your organization so that actually you are fundable. And so if I just tell you a bit about our services and our roadmap, so we have a roadmap and we actually journey with you to make sure that you get to the point of being funding ready so you know we have a charity setup service so we will help you decide you know what status is right for you 
uh, what is the right status for you? You know, in terms of compliance, we have a GDPR service to so make sure that, you know, all your data and compliance is, is, is okay. We have gift aid management, um, which again in itself is another way of generating income. We have an accounting service because like Dominic has said, your accounts need to be in order if you are going to be investable or if funders are going to trust you. We have a digital app and of course we have the funding fundraising service. So we literally journey with you to get you uh, funding ready. So do get in touch with us as soon as this webinar is finished. Uh, you will be directed to a fundraising survey. Please complete that and Dominic will be in touch with you. Um, and you can also visit our, our website, goodtogive.co.uk. There is a contact form there. Um, and also um, you can contact uh, Dominic uh, as well. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Um, so any last words, any last words, Dominic, on, you know, uh, why people, I mean, we, we have communicated, if people don't know by now why they should be working with us, um, you know, but is there any final words that we want to leave uh, today's audience with? Yeah, um, I think that we, we are, um, as a community, um, we have fallen behind in regards to accessing grant funding. And therefore, that's why it's important that um, anybody who is even assistance contacts us straight after this webinar, um, because it can give you that little, that foot, that foot up. It can help to ensure that you get off to a winning start. Um, mm -hmm. When it, when it comes down to it, writing bids is a specialist area and very competitive. And when you go into this area, you need to be able to compete the best that you can against charities that are well-established, that have already got relationships with funders, uh, got it all there. So you will need help to actually to put your stuff together to give yourself the best chance. And um, by all means, people try it yourselves, you know, but what I will say is that a lot of our business is returning business from churches, from charities who have um, been slogging and trying to get grant funding, but keep on getting knocked back continuously. Yeah. Uh, and then they come to us and we might get it on the first on the first um, attempt yeah. yeah so in regards to our fee uh, some people might say oh well we don't want to have to pay for it but anything that's worthwhile is worth paying for in yeah. that's what you find um and if it's not worth paying for maybe if you can put a price on it maybe it's not worth having and um, we know what we bring to the table and that we can be the that for you not guaranteed, but we can be that difference. Excellent. Excellent. We'll make you become better at putting in your own applications in the future yeah. because pick up on it as you're going along. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. This has been so valuable and we've had such uh, great comments. So we have someone saying this is a great webinar. Will the recording be made available as I would like to share with some of the other leaders? Absolutely. This is going to be on our YouTube channel. And so, uh, as soon as this webinar is finished, um, tomorrow you will receive a follow-up email um, with the link to our YouTube channel, but just Google uh, Good to Give YouTube. And by the end of the week, this recording will be live on there. We will also um, send you a follow-up email as well with further details as well. And like I said, if you complete the feedback survey, um, that you will automatically be redirected to once we close this webinar and we will take that information and we will, Dominic will be contacting you um, shortly. Um, uh, Alicia says she's great, enjoyed this immensely. Emma says, thank you, great to focus the mind in the key areas. So thank you all for joining uh, live. Please do look out for further events. Uh, from us. Our website, once again, is goodtogive.co.uk. We look forward to being in touch with all of you and hopefully uh, getting some of your uh, funding 
uh, applications uh, pass through or working with you to get funding ready. Thanks again for joining and hopefully we will see you soon. Thank you so much, Dominic. Your expertise and your knowledge is so rich. And I know that everyone uh, on this webinar has found it extremely, extremely uh, valuable. So until uh, next time, have an amazing week and we will speak to you all soon. Bye. -bye.